Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with our preseason tier list update. We'll be going over the updated tier list for all 5 roles and follow up on some balance changes from this patch. Now that the preseason has officially been out for a bit, we have a lot more info to go off of for making our list. Before we get into the tier list though, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players, and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can just take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, on to the tier list. First off, we'll start with the top laners. The first move that we'll be making here is sliding Warwick back up to the OP tier. Divine Sunderer, Jack Show, and Iceburn Gauntlet are all doing super well on him. But it's not just his mythic selection that has diversity. You can build him as tanky or damage heavy as you need to. Regardless of the build that you're going for, always start with Blade of the Rune King, pick up a mythic item second, and then brand out your build from there. Want to just group up and be a beefy boy? Go Titanic Hydra, Spare Visage, and Thorn Mill. Want to focus on side laning? Go for Ravenous Hydra instead, and then grab Death Stance for a high sustain and damage build that lets you 1v1 or even 1v2 with ease as you split push. This flexibility, along with him not really having any bad lanes, makes him a super strong option that you can reliably blind pick in any game. Shen has seen a pretty big spike in performance this patch, and seeing as he was already a pretty strong pick, we'll definitely be moving him up to the OP tier as well. His well-rounded kit makes him a strong duelist that can deal with both bruisers and beefier foes at all stages of the game. He may not be the flashiest champion, but there's no arguing the very consistent results that he's been getting for the past two seasons. And with this being the strongest that he's looked in quite a while, you should definitely consider adding him to your pool if he's not already in there. We're moving Sejuani down to the S tier. Tank items are being blown way out of proportion right now. I don't care about the occasional video here or there of some ADC with a bad build not doing damage to tank. Those instances can definitely make tanks look oppressive, but they're definitely more fringe cases. Across all five roles, the very best performing champions are all the squishy classes. Now that being said, Sejuani is still in the S tier, so it's not like she's terrible. But back to the topic of overhyped items, let me know that this is assuming you aren't building Heartsteel. That item is the most overbuilt thing that's ever been in League. That isn't to say it's awful and has absolutely no place in the game, it definitely is good on certain champions. But you can't just slap it on everybody, and it's not usually a good first item when you build it. You should only be going for it when you're going to focus on split pushing and fighting small skirmishes. When you do go for it, be sure to build it after some other item like Sunfire Ages. Jack Show is a much better option for actually grouping up in team fighting, which should be your main focus as Sedge in the later parts of the game anyway. So, I recommend that you just go for that most of the time. Halawi has been doing quite a bit better lately, so we're moving her up to the S tier. Her performance could be a bit inflated, since we just talked about how many people are actually overbuilding tank items, and Halawi naturally does super well against tanks. But either way, we still think that she deserves a promotion. We'll be moving Poppy up to the A tier this patch. Poppy is a bit of a strange case. She has some matchups where she does so well that you can consider her OP tier in them, but outside of those, she's just super average, and in a few rough lanes, she's really bad. Usually when a champ is matchup dependent, we'll just throw them in the B tier, but in this case, she has enough okay or neutral lanes that she deserves to be in one notch higher. Gangplank has started to do a lot better now, thanks to the rework to Navori Quickblades. Placing Gangplank on a list is always a little bit tricky. He's one of the highest skill cap champions in the game, so even when he's in our lower tiers, you can still seem pretty oppressive when the high elo one tricks play him. Right now, he's in such a good spot that he's actually having a positive win rate even in the middle elos. Going by his win rate alone, we'd definitely say that he's about an A tier pick. But if you're someone that really knows how to play GP well, like Master Plus well, not just good for plat, then he's definitely going to be an OP tier pick right now. We're moving Malphite down to the B tier. In his current state, he's only as good a counter to a few champions. Even then, that pool is so small that he's very close to being considered C tier. For the first time in a while, Rumble is looking like a somewhat viable top laner that doesn't get wrecked in absolutely every lane. That being said, he's still not nearly as strong when he is in the mid lane, and you definitely want to save him for counter picking. And for that reason, we'll put him in the B tier for now. Jax moves up to the B tier as well. A lot of the item changes are heavily in Jax's favor. Iceborne Gauntlet is a broken situational item for him, and Shoujin is absolutely insane if you get it later in the game. But he's still super matchup dependent, so don't go blind picking him and expecting good results. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Lilia moves up to the OP tier here. There isn't necessarily a huge reason for this. Neither Lilia nor any of the items that she builds got any significant changes this patch. More so, it's just that her kit is well suited for the new jungle. The current meta in the jungle leans a bit towards farm heavy champions, as well as those that have some built-in sustain in their kits. 
Lilia checks off both those boxes, and the stats show it. Due to the way she works, there are bound to be some games where you just can't win, no matter how fed you are. Her kit doesn't have that 1v9 potential like some champs do. But she's super easy to play, and over the course of dozens or hundreds of games, you'll definitely see some good consistency, which in the long run tends to get better results. Fallbear drops down to the S tier. Demotions like this don't mean very much. He's just a bit less oppressive than champs in the higher tier. If you like this strong early game aggression, and really know how to abuse his ult for tower diving, by all means, continue spamming him for free low. Olaf moves down to the S tier as well. Again, this isn't a huge deal. There are still definitely games where you can pick him up, and it feels kind of like an OP tier pick. Due to the sustain and ability to ignore CC, Olaf does a lot better against tankier opposing teams that focus more on disruption and slow burn damage. Against teams like that, he can basically 1v9 in the later parts of the game. After months of being a pretty awful pick, Shin Zhao has finally popped up as a really strong pick. We'll be moving him up to the S tier for now. Historically, Shin has been a champion where you perma gank and ignore your camps a lot of the time, but with the new system, it's important to balance both. This is made a lot easier now, since the jungle companions help AoE down the multi-target camps that he previously struggled with. Ramis has been hurt quite a lot by all the changes, so we're moving him down to the A tier. He's a pretty consistent pick, but his ceiling for carrying just isn't fantastic right now. Hecra moves up to the A tier. He's kind of the inverse of Ramis. His ceiling for carrying is extremely high, but he's also very feast or famine. If you end up behind, he's super worthless, but if you snowball early, he can be nearly unstoppable in the mid game. Even after his hotfix buff, Shaco is doing very poorly, so we're moving him down to the C tier. After being extremely dominant for most of Season 12, Amumu Jungle is in a pretty bad spot. He's hurting really bad from losing out on the Omni Vamp and health drain that you got from the jungle items before. The way the new items work just ain't cutting it. Maybe after the 12.23 changes, things will be a bit better, but for now, he's a no-go for me. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Zed has virtually no losing matchups. The few champs that he struggles with are off-meta picks that you basically never see, along with the Nivea. If you just ban her out, you're all but guaranteed a winning lane. And with Zed, getting a winning lane is all you really need to win most games. He's still the definition of a champ that can just take an inch and turn it into a mile. Just a small lead is all you need to start roaming around the map and one-shotting foes over and over again. In high elo, Syndra is easily the most broken mid laner in the game. The players there know how to get around her bumpy early game and scale up and be a strong mid to lick and carry. In the middle elos, she's not doing quite that well. She's still definitely one of the stronger options, but consistency-wise, we think she deserves to be in the S tier and not OP. Malzahar gets promoted to the S tier for this patch. He's not the most exciting to play as or play against. In fact, he's kind of on the same level as an enchanter when it comes to how much you really interact with the game. You just sort of neutralize the landing phase and then press R for some free kills. While boring to some, this is a really effective way to win the game, since there's really not much you can do to mess that up. While Echo Jungle is doing insanely well, in the mid lane, he's not doing so hot. So we're moving him down to the A tier. He's still alright, but don't be surprised if a good chunk of games are just over before you get strong enough to do that much about it. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Down here for both roles, the meta really hasn't changed much. There's just a couple of shifts here and there. Jen moves up to the OB tier. It's sort of just the natural cycle of bot lane. Without fail, even if he's not directly buffed or nerfed, Jin is perpetually a champion that finds its way to the top tier of Marksman. And Riot seems to like it that way, since the only changes they do make to him seem to be buffs. Swain has spent every patch since his mid-scope update being in the OP tier down here as a bot lane carry, but now we're finally moving him down a notch to the S tier. He's still a more than capable carry, but he's just a bit less consistent at doing it than the other higher tiered options. Shasana falls down a notch to the S tier as well. If you want an aggressive kill lane option, she's still definitely a very good pick, with some crazy snowball potential for hard carrying in the mid game. Twitch also gets knocked down to the S tier. He's still a really solid option, but if you really like playing Twitch and you want to play him in his best role, you should really consider picking him in the mid lane. He has no bad matchups there, and you have a lot more agency in the early game. To finish things off, we have our supports. Mumu moves down to the S tier. Out of all the engaged supports, I still think that he's overall the best and most reliable in terms of being able to get onto opponents and then locking down as many foes as you can in fights. That being said, engaged supports in general just aren't quite as reliable of picks as enchanters and mages overall. With his ability to make picks that can secure for your objectives or even help close out the game, Blitzcrank is never truly a bad pick. That being said, after so many nerfs, he's definitely not the super impressive pick that he used to be a few patches ago, so he's lost a lot of that consistency. Despite no changes being aimed at him or his new items, Maokai's support dropped pretty hard in performance on this patch. Riot pushed out some buffs for him in the 12.22b patch, but it didn't really help him all that much. He's not awful, but he's definitely not the best option for supports right now, and for that reason, we'll be putting him in the A tier.
And that wraps things up for our preseason tier list update. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know what your thoughts are and where the champions fall in the tier list down in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.